Hello, welcome to the next instalment in The Ice Monster by David Williams. Chapter 2 Monkey Feet. Elsie loved all the rats and pigeons that would find their way inside Wormley Hall. If she had any food, she would share it with them and tend to any broken wings and legs. In return, they would snuggle up to her, which made her feel less lonely. In her heart, Elsie felt a deep connection to these animals that Mrs Curdle called vermin. To her, they were little creatures all alone in the world, just like her. Elsie had noticed how the rats got into the orphanage by scuttling along a leaky pipe that came down from the ceiling. One thing that set Elsie apart from her fellow orphans was her feet. Elsie didn't have ordinary feet. She had monkey feet. The advantage of having long thick toes that could grip like fingers was that it made climbing easy peasy. So one night, when everyone else was asleep, Elsie scaled the pipe to see where the rat scrambled in. Just as she had thought, there was a small rat-sized hole at the top of the wall. After that, every night when after candles out, Elsie scaled the pipe using her monkey feet. Once at the top, she would scrape away at the brickwork with her fingernails. Night after night, she scraped and scraped, making the hole bigger and bigger. Scratch, 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 scratch. Eventually, the hole was just large enough for Elsie to squeeze her tiny, underfed body through it. However, she couldn't leave Wormley Hall without saying goodbye to her 25 friends. Wake up, she called softly. Little eyes began to appear out of the dark. I'm going to run away tonight. Who's coming with me? Silence. I said, who's coming with me? There were murmurs of, I'm too scared, and Curdle will kill us, and they'll catch us and beat us to death. The littlest little un of the lot was named Nancy. She looked up to Elsie like she was a big sister. Nancy whispered, Where are you going? I don't know, replied the girl. Anywhere but here. Please don't forget about us. Never. Promise. I promise, said Elsie. I'll see you all again one day. I know it. I'm going to miss your stories, said another orphan. Felix. Me too, added Percival. Next time I see you, I'll tell you the greatest story of all. Good luck, Elsie, said Nancy. You'll always be in here, replied Elsie, patting her chest. The girl gave one last shimmy up the pipe with her monkey feet. She squeezed herself through the hole in the wall and with one final wiggle, she was gone. Chapter 3 Pong Elsie ran and ran and ran as fast as she possibly could. She didn't dare look back. She was free, but alone, and now she had to fend for herself on the streets of London, even though she'd never been outside the orphanage before. The big city was a scary place, especially for a little girl. Danger lurked in every corner. Soon enough, though, Elsie taught herself how to steal food from the market stalls. As for a bed, she found an old tin bath to sleep in and used old newspapers as sheets. In her mind, Elsie pretended that it was a grand four-poster bed, fit for a queen. With no home or family... Elsie was what was known as an urchin. Victorian London was teeming with them. Elsie the urchin. 
never washed hair that looked like a mop. Dirty hands. Grubby face. Too big coat, borrowed from a washing line. Filthy monkey feet. Two small trousers thick with grime. No shoes. Jumper that was more holes than jumper. It should really just be called a holes. Pong. Elsie had never ever had a proper bath. Maggot baths only made you dirtier. Elsie didn't look much like a hero. However, as you will soon discover, heroes come in all shapes and sizes. Chapter 4. Expert Thief Read all about it! Ice monster found in Arctic! Living on the streets of London had its advantages. You slept under the stars. You ate all the fresh fruit and vegetables you could swipe. Best of all, you were the first to know about everything. News spread fast. And this was big news. Having never been to school, Elsie couldn't read or write. However, the newspaper sellers would holler the headlines to passers-by. The Evening Standard. Find of the century. Ice monster discovered at North Pole. The London Chronicle. Monster found buried in the ice. The Evening Standard. History made as long dead ice monster dug up. The London Chronicle. Ice monster frozen. The Times. Ice monster, 10,000 years old, says expert. Could this be true? A real life monster? 10,000 years old too? Elsie was old enough to know that monsters weren't real and young enough to believe that they might just be. The girl had swiped an apple off a market stall for her breakfast. Munching contentedly, she wove her way through the, mar the march of top-hatted gentlemen, heading for work, until she reached the newspaper stand. Get lost, you little thief! shouted the newspaper seller. He whacked the girl on the back of her head with a rolled-up copy of the Times. Thwack! You got whacked by grown-ups every day if you were an urchin. You were the lowest of the low. At least it made a welcome change from being battered with a broomstick at Wormley Hall. I only want to look, pleaded Elsie. These papers is not for looking at. They is for buying. Now scram, before I give you a kick where the sun don't shine. Not being a fan of a boot at the bottom, Elsie smiled at the man and ambled off down the street. She turned into an alleyway, then reached into the back of her grubby trousers and pulled out a copy of the Times. The girl had become an expert thief. There were big, bold, black letters on the front page. Elsie knew these spelled out words, but it all looked like a jumble to her. The picture underneath did speak to her, though. It was of a peculiar creature that looked like an elephant. Once, she'd poked her head through the flap in a circus tent to get a free show and seen an elephant performing tricks. However, this elephant was covered in thick hair and its tusks were long and curved. It was encased in a huge block of ice and a number of Arctic explorers were standing around it looking proud. Despite the creature's bizarre appearance, Elsie found it hard to think of the poor thing as a monster. Monsters you were scared of. This animal you wanted to hug. It looked a great deal smaller than the elephant she'd seen at the circus. Perhaps it was a baby. Despite having been dead for thousands of years, it still looked lost and alone. An orphan, whispered Elsie to herself, just like me. And next time... We'll read from chapter 5.